Good afternoon. Please be seated. The president, the trustees, and the faculty of Fairfield University are happy to welcome you, the family, friends, and associates of Mr. Dolan, as well as our students representing the Dolan School of Business, to this conferring of the Doctor of Laws honorary degree on Charles F. Dolan. Father Von Arks, trustees, deans, members of the faculty, administrators, students, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this honorary degree ceremony. Please rise for the invocation which will be offered by Reverend Mark Scalise of the Society of Jesus and Director of Campus Ministry. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the blessings you confer on Fairfield University, for our students whose idealism and open spirits fill us with hope, for our staff whose care and dedication to our students inspire us, for our faculty whose scholarship helps us to understand our world and enlarges our intellectual horizons, for our administrators whose management of the university and vision for its future lead us forward. We thank you for the trustees who make certain that Fairfield continues to thrive and remains financially secure, and for the benefactors whose generosity makes it all possible. On this day, O oh Lord, we are especially grateful for the tremendous friend and patron Charles Dolan has been to this university. His pioneering vision and entrepreneurial acumen in the television and sports industries have impacted the entertainment and financial world for more than 50 years. And his willingness to de dedicate so much of his time and treasure on behalf of Fairfield has profoundly affected this institution. As we honor him today, we ask you to bless him for his life's achievements and magnanimous spirit. Bless his wife, Helen Ann, their large extended family and all whom they hold dear. Bless him with good health and happiness and bless his commercial and philanthropic legacy with continued success. Finally, Lord, on this special occasion, bless Fairfield University. May this school continue to educate women and men who uphold the highest ideals of the Jesuit and Catholic education that they have received and in so doing, give ever greater glory to you. We ask this, knowing that you are our loving God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father Scalise. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to introduce Reverend Jeffrey Von Arks of the Society of Jesus and President of Fairfield University. Thank you, Lynn. As always, when we take a moment like this to celebrate a milestone in the history of the university, I try to step back and look at our work together as educators within the longer and deeper context of the mission of Jesuit higher education, and indeed the overarching mission and vision of St. Ignatius. And as I do that and think about the life and the career of Charles Dolan, I am struck at just how profoundly Ignatian in character his work has been. We often say that we want to form men and women who will go out and transform the world for the better. Men and women who will set the world on fire. The goal is precisely to engage with the world as it is, to discover what is possible, and then to have the courage and the fortitude to build the structures and the institutions that will turn that vision into a reality in the service of the greater good. That is the Ignatian charism in a nutshell. And doesn't that describe the work of Charles Dolan? Right at the start, when he was just 12 years old, he was selling magazine subscriptions. Then he was writing a column about his experience as a Boy Scout for the Cleveland Press. While still a boy, he was traveling on the train from Cleveland to New York 
to try and sell Lone Ranger scripts to national radio. You can already see in these early strivings the seed of Charles Dolan's unique character, the drive to communicate, to reach people, to inform, and to do so on a national scale. In the years that have followed, he built Cablevision, pioneered how sports are brought into people's homes, and built the framework and the technological infrastructure that revolutionized the media, exploding the avenues of communication and television beyond what most people could have imagined, and in many ways anticipating the digital revolution that is characteristic of our age. This makes Charles Dolan one of the great communicators of our time. Jesuit education has always had a particular appreciation for the arts and for the power of the imagination to transform people at a deep level. Indeed, the spiritual exercises are based on exercise of the human imagination, and the early Jesuit educators were great proponents of the arts, architecture, music, and theater because they understood that the narrative and dramatic arts opened people up to a better understanding of their own natures, and hence, ultimately, to a desire for ultimate truth. What Charles Dolan has accomplished in a similar vein is nothing less than to have dramatically expanded the imagination of our culture, and in so doing, expand the reach of information and education to many who might otherwise have been denied what that culture had to offer. Fairfield University has been extraordinarily fortunate to have benefited from Charles Dolan's example, support, and inspiration. Thanks to his support, the Charles F. Dolan School of Business is one of the best business schools in the country, and one with a reputation that is rising all the time. Our graduates are sought after in financial industry, media, marketing, and accounting, and so on, and they are particularly sought after because of their entrepreneurial spirit anchored to a strong ethical foundation. In many respects, they have been formed in the tradition and example of Charles Dolan. It is also true that many of them have benefited from the scholarship support that he has provided. Many of the graduate students who are supported by these scholarship funds are international students whose presence adds a wonderful dimension to our graduate education where we are preparing all of our students to be global citizens. As we move forward, we remain committed to forming the graduates of the Dolan School so that they continue to embody the virtues and spirit of Ignatian principles, courage, vision, the willingness to experiment and to innovate, but to always remember that the overarching goal is the social good and the service of our neighbors, our country, and our world. Thankfully, we will always have the example of Charles Dolan to point to and to follow. Our students will have that example before them for generations to come. And Chuck, let me assure you that Fairfield is committed to the enhancement of the great legacy that you so generously launched in 2000. And so we are honored and grateful and pleased to be able to celebrate Charles Dolan today by presenting him with this honorary We shall now have the reading of the honorary degree citation by Dr. Donald Gibson, Dean of the School of Dolan School of Business. Dr. Gibson. The President and Trustees of Fairfield University to all who shall view these presents, greetings, and peace in the Lord. There are only a few men and women who can truly be called pioneers, those who forge a path through the unknown to a brighter future that only they can imagine. By this standard, Charles F. Dolan, the founder of Cablevision and Home Box Office, and a man who revolutionized the distribution of information in our culture, can truly be called a pioneer. This drive to create, to innovate, and to persevere was evident in Mr. Dolan's earliest years, a spirit inherited from his father, David J. Dolan, an inventor in the auto industry. 
By the time Charles Dolan was 12, he began his first job selling magazines for the Crowell Collier Publishing Company. His love of media was sparked, and as an avid Boy Scout, he was soon writing a weekly column for the Cleveland Press, Scouting in Cleveland by Eagle Scout Charles Dolan. By six, Nice title. By 16, he was traveling to New York on the train to try and sell scripts for the Lone Ranger radio series. It was while working later in radio that Mr. Dolan and his wife, Helen Ann, started a business that would set the trend for enterprises to come, developing sports films and distributing them to news outlets. That would lead to Teleguide Incorporated, which provided information to New York City hotels. The key to success was the distribution of television signals through cable, an innovation that Mr. Dolan extended to the rest of New York bringing professional sports teams, cultural programming, and movies into the homes of cable viewers. Encouraged by the power and potential of cable, Mr. Dolan founded Home Box Office, and in 1973, he founded Cablevision on Long Island, which would grow to become one of the largest and most influential media companies in the world. Throughout, Mr. Dolan developed a reputation for entrepreneurial vision, courage, loyalty, and for always remaining open to what life has to offer. When something interesting happens, check it out, his daughter Kathleen remembers him saying. He's never lost perspective that he's one human being among the rest of us. When his colleague Mark Lustgarten passed away from pancreatic cancer, Mr. Dolan founded the Lustgarten Foundation, to help change the outcome for those with the illness, still the largest private foundation devoted to pancreatic cancer research. And in 2000, thanks to his generosity as a benefactor and trustee, Fairfield University named the business school the Charles F. Dolan School of Business. The Dolan School is one of the best business schools in the nation and one that prides itself on forming graduates in the Jesuit tradition of serving the common good while embracing the entrepreneurial drive exemplified by Mr. Dolan. For his pioneering spirit, his vision of an interconnected world that far predated the technology to come, and for his personal role in the expansion of the media industry, the president and board of trustees of Fairfield University hereby proclaim Charles F. Dolan, Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Charles F. Dolan to offer remarks. Well, any time I I have the opportunity to hear so many nice things said about me, (laughs) I'm willing to get up as early in the morning as I need to and to travel as far. <laughs> but what I want, I, I really want to start by thanking all of you for doing that. I think it's terrific for you to assemble and to, to put, put such a flattering ceremony together for me. Uh, it's a really very stimulating and I'm very grateful to all of you uh, for being here. Fairfield University to our family has been a really a monumental institution, a great influence. They, uh, we've been involved with it now for what, about 40 years. Uh, and uh, 
it, it has helped our family in so many different ways. And uh, it, it is for me to be grateful to you, not you to be grateful to me. But, but, at, but at any rate, uh, it's wonderful to be here with you. Our uh, involvement uh, with uh, Fairfield began with our youngest daughter, uh, uh, Debbie, uh, who uh, graduated. Uh, when did she graduate? Uh, it was quite a while ago. <laughs> And she now has uh, uh, eight children, and uh, uh, she was followed at Fairfield by our daughter Kathleen, who has two. And between those ten, we uh, hope that we will have uh, more students at Fairfield University <laughs> in the future. And then uh, my younger brother Larry, his daughters. Uh, Joan and Carol uh, came to Fairfield, and uh, uh, they had many wonderful years here and are, are, are you know, wonderful graduates. And then just last, last uh, semester, our granddaughter, uh, Marianne Rose, uh, graduated, and uh, indeed that was an event the father let me give her the, her diploma, much to her surprise. <laughs> they, uh, but it was a, a spectacular d a day, and uh, Marianne sits uh, right there with her next to her father, and her mother is around here somewhere, right <laughs> over there, right. The, uh, but this degree is really a great honor, and it's uh, also uh, pretty useful. I, I've, I've mentioned my brother uh, Lawrence. Larry is a lawyer, and, La and his wife, uh, Eva, is a lawyer, and four of their six children are lawyers. So it's, uh, you want to integrate with your, uh, with your family, <laughs> but if, in, with that family, if you don't have a degree, it's uh, very difficult to do that. <laughs> and up until just a few minutes ago, I didn't have a degree, but now I have one. All right. the, uh, the, uh, now, now at least I'll, uh, if uh, I can't do anything else with that degree, at least I can show them around the courthouse. <laughs> so, the, uh, the, my, uh, my brother, Larry, uh, would have been here, but he he couldn't come today because uh, in addition to law, he has developed another interest. He's a Clevelander, and he now owns the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> and that team, as you may know, is engaged in a stressful series <laughs> with the Chicago Cubs. The, uh, but, uh, but Larry said to me that... Uh, if I come tonight, where we are going, and if I wear my academic robes, <laughs> that I, that he will invite me to throw out the first pitch. <laughs> uh, I thought that was fine until I saw the game last night, and then I thought, oh no, forget f throwing out the first pitch. I want to be in the lineup, <laughs> uh, and I I want to. Uh, I, I want I want I want the bat, so uh, they, they uh, it it just seemed after last night uh, that uh, something like that was absolutely necessary. So if you happen to be watching the uh, game tonight and you see a pinch hitter uh, t go out to the uh, plate and he's uh, r the most well dressed in the whole team. <laughs> Well, you'll know who it is. But again, I want to thank all of you for the, the, uh, the trouble that you took uh, to uh, come here today. It's really an honor to see you all here. And uh, I see so many familiar faces in this group.
and uh, you r really made this a special joy for all of us, for my family and for myself, and thank you very much. This ends the honorary ceremony. Will the guests please remain in their seats until the platform party has recessed out of the Great Hall. Guests are then in cordially invited next door to the Diffley Boardroom for a celebratory lunch. <laughs>